Hi there, welcome to Summerside Dental. I'm Dr. Kim Bolt. I'm gonna pretend you're right here in my office asking me your top 10 dental emergency questions. Number 10, trauma. If you have had a blow to the mouth of some sort, phone us, we need to assess whether it's a true emergency or not. So even texting me a photo would be great. If it's an adult tooth that's broken right to the nerve, like to the red part, oh boy, we're gonna have to put some sedative dressing on that or see what we can do. If it's just a chipped incisal edge, it can probably wait till COVID after COVID-19. If it's a baby tooth that got bonked on the side of the bathtub or something, watch for a darkening of the tooth. Like usually it might go dark. Sometimes it also forms a pus bubble at the end and maybe even will have a little pimple type swelling. Then it's infected and we would need to either do a little baby tooth root canal or extract it. So, but oftentimes these little baby teeth, they're almost near time to be loosened out or they just chip. They can be very um, flexible baby teeth or baby mouths. They're like green. The bone is not brittle like adult teeth. So sometimes just putting pressure there with a cool washcloth um, can just uh, like settle down any bleeding or trauma there. And usually like by the next day, the child is better. And if the tooth is a little bit mobile, sometimes it just even tightens up over the next few days. If there's a bit of bleeding around the edge, it calms down. So send us a, a text photo probably for trauma. That is a true emergency. Number two, significant infection. Wow, if you are so swollen that your airway is almost closed, then you better call us or like that might constitute a go to the hospital and get an IV antibiotics. But if it's like your wisdom teeth are swollen and you look a bit like a chipmunk, it could be pericoronitis, we call it like inflammation or a bit of infection around your wisdom teeth, do some salt water rinsing, phone me and we will get you on an antibiotic right away. Um, it could be a different tooth swelling like maybe you know the history of your tooth and it had a root canal once and it failed or it had trauma once and you have like a dime or a quarter size swelling around it phone that needs um antibacterial rinses solid rinse or like antibiotics and ideally root canal or extraction but at this point most offices are not open we would have to figure out which ones would be to help get either that tooth pulled or just settle the infection for now number three Prolonged bleeding. Well, that's usually like after an extraction that a patient would have that prolonged bleeding. But I have had several calls of parents whose children have baby teeth that are loose and then they're wondering about bleeding. So just to remind you, there are 20 baby teeth, not just eight. Like you remember when the front teeth, they wiggled those out. Don't forget that as like age 11, 12, their molars, like their baby molars, get loose or wiggly or sometimes even break and fall out. So I've had a couple questions or um, calls about that. That bleeding is not uncommon. That's the baby teeth, wiggle them out, great. The other bleeding question is gum bleeding. By all means, brush, floss your teeth well. Um, gums are not meant to bleed. Like when you wash your hair, your scalp doesn't bleed. When you brush your teeth, your teeth shouldn't bleed. But sometimes um, pregnancy gingivitis, there's some dietary things that can cause some bleeding. But Usually it's not so extreme that it needs to come to the emergency office. Just keep your teeth meticulously clean, floss every day for a week, and that bleeding inflammation should settle down. Number four, pain. Pain which cannot be controlled by over-the-counter meds is constituted by the Alberta Dental Association as an emergency. But we are to be following up with you on the phone as to whether you've tried um, Tylenol and then to get the history of that tooth. Does it have a great big filling? Has it had... A history of trauma or root canal or something like that because we are not to be doing any treatment that causes aerosols in the air so we can't be using a high speed um so your pain we need to figure out the source of it so let's go on to our next questions uh well actually back to that one if it's coming in waves and it's really hot sensitive then potentially the nerve could be dying on the inside of the tooth, in which case it could need potentially a root canal or extraction. And so that type of pain, phone us, text us, and we will we'll get something resolved with you with that. Next, number six, just sensitive teeth. Now this one's really common. Um, when we go outside and we breathe in cold air, the teeth feel the sensitivity like along the roots often from recession 
or just from um, tubules that are open. It could also be a small cavity in the tooth. These are not being treated at this time. We aren't to use high speeds or any hand pieces that would cause aerosols. So the only emergencies we could do is if there is a great big open sore cavity that's sensitive to air, we can scoop it out with a spoon and place a medicated sedative temporary dressing filling is what we're allowed to do, but nothing rotary. So sensitive teeth, if it's usually often just the roots showing, try a dab of Sensodyne toothpaste or any of your favorite over-the-counter sensitivity medication toothpaste, and that will help to plug the pores of the root and cause a, cause a barrier, make them a little less sensitive. Number five, broken or cracked tooth. Okay, so this often happens with silver fillings in the back, like, they expand and contract with temperature. And so by all means, when you bite on your very back tooth, often that as the hinge of your mouth closes, that's the first one to feel that quick sharp zing of a, a crack. And so avoid chewing on your tooth if it's getting those crack tooth symptoms. Um, just, just try not to clench, stay away from it. Don't be biting anything hard on it. We're not allowed to shave the tooth down. Um, ideally we would place a crown on that tooth, like shave it down and prepare it for full coverage to prevent fracture and do a crown. But that would be in the future. We aren't allowed to do any rotary um, handpiece use right now. So on the um, note of crowns though, the Alberta Dental Association has said that if a crown comes off, that would qualify as an office visit for us to put the crown back on because we could sandblast it, sterilize it, sterilize the tooth and put it on without causing aerosols and it would help prevent further damage to that tooth. So if your crown falls off, do phone and we can get you back with that. But back to the cracked tooth, um, by all means, even if a portion has broken off, you can put the dab of the sensitivity toothpaste on there again. But again, we're not allowed to do regular filling. So your little crack, sometimes it's just in the enamel, the outer portion of the tooth, the enamel, which has no innervation like your hair or your fingernails. You don't feel it if you chip off a bit, don't panic. It'll smooth down a bit as you eat with it. But then once the pandemic is over, we can certainly do a filling there. Next emergency question. Number four, sore jaw. Wow, this one seems to be very common right now. So people are feeling like my face feels sore or my jaw feels sore. So one of the tests you can do is to check if you put one finger inside your mouth and one outside your mouth and you feel, is it actually your teeth or is it just these, these muscles and the jaw itself? Because so many of you are under stress right now and you're clenching. And I'm sorry about that, but try not to hold so much tension in your muscles because that makes pain radiate all through like your neck, the back of your neck and up into your temporalis. Do some massaging, relaxing. Ideally, at some point we would make you a night guard. We'd use a TENS machine and relax those muscles. Um, after pandemic, we can, in the meantime, a soft night guard um, or just some over-the-counter muscle relaxants or backs a set a nice bath with warm salt water to help relax your muscles and just try not to hold tension or put pressure on your teeth because that can cause them to be sore and the jaw and the muscles all to be sore. Relax, breathe. Next emergency question, gum sores. Okay, so these come in a variety of types. By all means, if you're getting like viral cold sores on the front of your mouth, those ones are a virus too. Um, so we can prescribe, for me and I can prescribe acyclovir, either topical or pill form. Those ones, you know, often patients know when they get the cold sores. Other times they're in the mouth. Aphthous ulcers are white ulcerated areas that often come from stress, sunlight, spicy foods, hormonal things. And so a lot of times it's just happening from all this is going on in the world. And so we feel like um, the mouth is just sore with these like great big ulcerations. Call me, I'll get you some acetonide. No, it is um, triamcinolone acetonide that can like help to calm the mouth if you get aphthous ulcers. The other thing that's very common, like plaque causes gums to poof up and be red. And so I've got some photos from some parents whose kids have some gum swelling. Often they're like overgrowing gums. We need to floss, get those gums pushed up or down and not overgrowing down from the plaque or bacteria on the mouth. So uh, brush and floss, use a rotary toothbrush, get in there, 
supervise your kids. You've got more time now to be watching them with their oral health care. So um, just be sure that their mouth is super clean. Number two, tongue tie. Okay, so I'm getting calls from parents whose little babies are having difficulty nursing. Now, this is something that I do on a regular basis at Summerside Dental is help nursing moms if their babies have tongue tie or upper lip tie. But at this time, we're not able to do that treatment because it's elective. But most of the time you can just stretch it, stretch that upper lip or stretch that tongue. Make sure that every time the baby latches, its lip is flipped out like this and get the whole areolus in and by all means do not worry at this point about having surgery to release that if your medical doctor feels that you need to have the tongue or lip released then maybe in your general doctor's office setting but not here at Summerside Dental at this time sorry and the number one question what do I do if I get COVID-19 virus in my mouth well you can use something that the Alberta Dental Association has been advocating or even the American ADA, um, Colgate, this peroxide, peroxyl mouthwash has been um, something they've been recommending. It has 1.5% hydrogen peroxide and that you can rinse if you are feeling like you've been in contact and you need to try to sterilize your mouth. Now, by all means, the um, antibacterials do not really work like our usual chlorhexidine mouthwash doesn't kill viruses. Salt water rinsing, salt can explode, but um, peroxide. Now, do not be drinking um, the like aquarium cleaner that I heard was the story or just bleach, do not do that. But the special rinses with antiviral. I also have something else that I could give you. It's my... Um, whitening packs these take home whitening now they have 12 percent hydrogen peroxide now this is just something that is uh take home in a soft tray that helps to whiten the teeth now if you're very interested in getting this 12 percent that's okay to have in your mouth i would be willing to drive one of these to your home if you're a regular patient and you'd like one leave your message leave your name in the message and i'll i'll find your address and i'll deliver one to the safe distance on your um on your front step or mailbox with um with just a note of thanks from us because it is it is antiviral. I don't think it's going to do a, a big difference once you get COVID or if you had it in your mouth, but by all means, what's even better is of course your social distancing, washing your hands really well, breathing through your nose. Oh, I'm such an advocate. If your nose hairs are filtering the air, if you breathe through your mouth, the pathogens get in the mouth and or can more easily get in, down into your lungs. But if you breathe through your nose, that is um, eliminating the pathogens from the air and then the nitric acid in your sinuses helps it clear out um, the, the pathogens in your, in your airway. So it's so much healthier to breathe through your nose. But if you do get pathogens in through your mouth, rinse, rinse, rinse well, salt water rinsing, keep your vitamins up, keep your health up, um, stay away from places where you may be in contact with others, do your social distancing, but um, you guys actually are excellent patients. I'm impressed with how smart you are with your self-diagnosing and figuring out what's going on with your teeth and screening your own emergencies, but this maybe will just help if um, you need some guidance as to when to call or not. So my number is 780-920-6678. Dr. Kim Bolt, and um, let me know if you have a true dental emergency. Thanks team, bye.